while transitioning towards electric vehicles. It's a bit contradictory, but uh, these emissions will go up a bit. Number of passengers is going down. We are using less and less efficiently our cars. So you have kind of a Russian doll of indicators. Yeah. You have the macro <laughs> one, you have the smaller one, and the and yeah. the tiniest one. The major challenge is to to communicate between these levels. And you arrive at one indicator, <laughs> which everybody loves and wants to hear how much, yeah. which is... Hello everyone, and welcome to the Circular Metabolism Podcast, the bi-weekly meeting where we have in-depth discussions with researchers, policymakers and practitioners to better understand the metabolism of our societies, or in other words, their resource use and pollution emissions, and how to reduce them in a systemic, socially just and context specific way. Today, I'm very pleased to share a two part episode on exploring the resource use and climate impact of mobility. In fact, mobility is responsible for a very large share of our CO2 emissions energy use and material use, both for the construction of vehicles and their associated infrastructure like roads. This is a two-part episode. The first part was published in the Metabolism of Cities YouTube channel yesterday, which I'll link in the description, whereas the second part, the one you're watching right now, is hosted here on the UMX YouTube channel. To explore the resource use impacts of mobility, I'm glad to welcome Carl Van Acker, Carl is professor in sustainable materials management at KU Leuven. His research develops strategies to realize the circular economy and develop sustainability assessments of material life cycles, including mobility. Hi, Carl. Welcome hi, to the Steve. podcast. <laughs> I'm saying hi and I'm, uh, and I'm laughing, of course, because we had the first episode just before. During the first episode, we discussed together about the, the future of clean energy in the mobility sector. Mm -hmm. It's high demand in uh, metals. Mm -hmm. We're gonna demand more and more metals and different types of metals than traditionally at different speeds. And uh, this um, opened many questions, right? We, we talked about self-sufficiency. We talked about how much uh, do we need for it to be virgin materials versus secondary materials or metals. Also the benefits of recycling in terms of CO2, of relocalizing. So. We saw that we could perhaps satisfy some of our 50% of metals by 2050. So there is a lot of opportunities in terms of recycling, also uh, reducing carbon footprint, as we said, 30 to 9%, depending on the metal. So we see that there is a huge demand of metals. We see that there is a huge opportunity to recycle it for many different aspects, self-sufficiency, uh, economic, uh, environmental, etc., etc. So I want to today talk about more deeply about circular economy, not only recycling, because this is kind of the tip of the iceberg, but see it in a more holistic, systemic way. And you have worked at the interface between science and policy for many years. So mm. <laughs> it's a, always a, a great and a difficult uh, role because uh, you need to bring the best research, but also re uh, kind of answer to political demands, mm. which are hard sometimes to, to, to satisfy, right? Let's start with something very basic. What is the difference between circular economy and recycling? I'm very happy with that question. <laughs> I, was, I was really afraid that you were uh, reducing circular economy to recycling, which no, is no, no. not, of course. And uh, I always say that, cir that recycling is, is a cornerstone of uh, circular economy, but it's only a cornerstone. It's, it's, there's much more than that. And basically, circular economy is about keeping the value of materials into the economy, into society. And that means that uh, we also want to reduce the inputs of virgin resources as much as possible. And as well, the outputs in terms of waste, uh, uh, that we don't uh, want this, this, this waste anymore, that we want to, to keep that, that material into the economic life, taking into account that whatever we do has also an impact on the environment, so that also environmental impact should be as low as possible. And so I, I, I really stress and, and like to add that since it's of no use to, to invent uh, circuit economy strategies without looking to environmental impact. And so 
let's let's stick to the first part. Eh? So mm-hmm. keeping the value of materials in society and reducing and the virgin resource consumption. How how do you do that? Eh? Mm. Uh, with recycling, of course, but <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of other things as well. And the first thing that you have to um, to think of uh, that you have to start with is to define yeah, what are now societal needs. Mm. Uh, what, what 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 do people need? They need housing. They need education. And they need. Uh, communication and we call and, and use computers they need mobility yeah, that's uh, the topic uh, more focused topic of today yeah? so that that's that's a societal need yeah? and if you start from that uh, the next question then is how can you fulfill that mm. and for most of these needs you need products yeah? so can we fulfill these these needs in a comfortable way, in a modern way, but yeah, with a small amount of products? So can we reduce the amount of products that we need to fulfill these societal needs? If we come to mobility, for example, yeah, there are many two things to 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 realize or to answer that question. The one thing is to extend. <laughs> the lifetime of your product as far as possible by maintaining well, by repairing, uh, reusing, remanufacturing. Okay, repairing and reusing in the mobility sector is quite established, although cars can still be used longer than than today. Mm -hmm. There is a certain margin on that. The second thing that you can think of is that these products that are often only used for a certain small percentage even of their capacity, of their time as well, to increase that part. For example, by sharing cars. Uh, So it's known that cars are idle for 95% of their time. (laughs) They can be used by other persons. Uh, I don't have a personal car anymore. I'm, I'm a very convinced uh, car share or by sitting with more people in one car for example and that's that's right sharing and things like that so these these two circular economy strategies uh, in general terms they really help uh, this question of reducing products that you need to fulfill the societal needs mm. of course uh, we are talking about materials and resources in circular economy. So these products are made from materials. And so the next question then is, can we reduce the amount of materials that we need to make a product? Eco-design, for example, helps with that. We can try to lightweight a car. Um, we can um, also try to, to intensify production processes, additive manufacturing, for example, could be a nice strategy. Eh? You have less waste during production at that uh, with that technology, so that's that's also a possibility. And the third question that you have to add is then, yeah, how many virgin resources do you need to make these materials? Eh? And if you talk about that, yeah, you can look at can we change uh, this this resource from an uh, resource-intensive things such as metals. Uh, um, you need a lot of ores for copper. Making copper, you need a lot of uh, ores to, to have a certain amount of tons of, of copper. Can we use bio-based materials instead, for example? Eh? Um, so substitution is important there. And of course, eh? uh, yeah, converting materials that are at the end of their life that are wasted into new materials by recycling. Eh? Mm. But you see in my reasoning, it's it's the very last option, recycling. It's not only because I tell it in this, this, this uh, sequence, but research also shows that the, um, the, the capacity to reduce the need for virgin uh, materials to increase circularity in general, that the capacity of these these more yeah 
um, I would maybe call it economic uh, uh, strategies such as sharing and, and, and uh, repair economy and things like that. The, the capacity to, re- to, to impact on, on circularity is much bigger for them. Partly because we already recycle, eh? yeah. uh, f- to, 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 be, uh, to be clear. I think this is a great starter to, to get the, the, the theory out of it. Yeah. Now let's dive into some examples so yeah. I think that people situate what yeah. we mean, right? Yeah, because yeah. I think it's circular economy is a great uh, element and I think a number of people are, okay, but how do we put it in practice? And especially, you know, in Flanders or in a territory and especially for a sector within mm. that territory, right? Yeah. So what I suggest is that y- you and your team did this circularity assessment of Flanders, yes. the region of Flanders. Um, and when I'm going to show it then on the video, this circular uh, economy diagram, this Sankey yeah. diagram, as we call yeah. it, or yeah. material flow diagram. And over there, we see a number of flows entering, exiting, uh, you know, yes. going back and all of this. Uh, I think it's important that we highlight how does a territory like uh, Flanders work. So things need to come in, either they're extracted locally or they're imported. Things are exported. Uh, some others are consumed. So when we talk about cars, when a car is consumed, it stays in the territory for a long time, what we call a stock. And then at the end of their life, either they are treated locally as waste or they go back a circular economy or they're exported as waste, right? This is a bit the the major uh, explanation of things and their emissions all along. In Flanders, you, um, you measured all of this. You measured how much goes in, how much goes out, the impacts and all of this. And you arrive at one indicator, <laughs> which everybody loves and wants to hear how much, yeah. which is the circularity material use rate. Yes. We're not going to reveal right now the number so that people are at the edge of their seats and okay. their way. <laughs> but uh, perhaps can you talk about a bit the, um, the functioning of Flanders? What is specific about Flanders? So the imports, the exports, the, the extraction. W- w- what is some insights that we can... Uh, read when we have these type of, uh, you know, diagrams, right? Well, first of all, Flanders is a very open economy. Yeah? So we do import a lot. We do export a lot. Eh? Uh, so that's always a discussion also with the, with the industry. Uh, they stress uh, that, that we are an open economy and they are right. And eh? the, these fellow chains are international. We are only a very small uh, country. So if you have indicators, and that should be taken into account in, in, in some way. Um, we don't have uh, that many resources, especially not uh, for metals, none. Uh, <laughs> for minerals, a, a little bit, um, uh, natural aggregates. Uh, but, but so actually we do import uh, mainly. We have a good recycling sector. I have to say, so we, we can recycle quite a lot. Um, for example, for construction, it's, it's said that we can recycle more than 90%. We will not <laughs> open the discussion about downcycling. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, it has some second life, let's, let's call it la- like that. So that's, that's one of the problems, of course, of su- such a circularity uh, a, a circular, sorry, materials use rate. Uh, uh, it doesn't say anything about the quality of the materials that you keep into the economy. Eh? So mm. it's not only important to keep materials into the economy, it should be at the highest value uh, or the highest quality as possible. Mm. So unfortunately, it doesn't say anything about that. What it basically is, is uh, the, that it is the ratio between the things that we recycle as material or reuse as products over the entire input of materials. So including uh, the things that I mentioned already and what we import as uh, ores or uh, materials into uh, products. Uh, so that ratio should increase and that's a good thing 
But again, it's not a full story, of course. Uh, it doesn't say anything about the quality. It doesn't. It's a relative number, uh-huh. so <laughs> it, that could also increase. But at the same time, also the um, absolute numbers of the inputs could also increase. Mm. Uh, so if the economy e- economy is growing a lot. Uh, is doing well and we recycle better we, we increase that number by, by two percent but it could also yeah the the, the absolute amounts could also uh, have increased a lot at the meantime it doesn't say anything about impacts on the environment and things like that neither and so there are a lot of aspects it's it's a nice number uh, <laughs> I, I love it too of course um but it's 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 yeah it says only certain aspects and most important i think for this this uh, podcast especially is it's very difficult to for for politicians they like one number but on the other hand it's very difficult to follow up on it yeah they can install certain incentives yeah for example um uh, for for increasing uh, recycling subsidies for for recycling facilities or incentives for sharing uh, products and, and so forth but by the time that it is reflected in that number we are yeah a lot of years later and therefore you have to actually dig a little bit deeper into mm. the details eh? and then we have to yeah what, what we found out and what we also did eh, for the Flemish government is yeah, not only stay at this economy-wide materials flow, eh, but also go to what we call the societal need systems. Eh, and need systems, that one of these need systems is the mobility system in Flanders, and so the, the car fleet, but also trains and and, and so forth. Um, so there... And... and we try to derive also indicators at that level hmm. that then says more um, and, and, and give better feedback also for politicians on their own um, yeah, measures that they, that they install. So you have kind of a Russian doll uh, of indicators. Yeah. You have the macro <laughs> one, you have the smaller one and the, and yeah. the tiniest one somehow um, and all need to be magically fit with one another of course uh, yeah. <coughs> which is a technical challenge yeah. yeah yeah indeed since yeah we we now mentioned only the the, the uh, region wide indicators and the societal need indicators but you also have indicators at the value chain level the value chain level is for the circuit economy extremely important eh? so since it's are the value chains that you can make circular Mm. But uh, we also have to look at product and component level and we can also look at the material level. So these are all different levels in the circuit economy. We all have different indicators for that. The one we know best actually is the material level and Mm. substance flow analysis for the stocks and flows of substances, but also life cycle assessments for the impact side, life cycle inventory also. Uh, delivers information about uh, the system uh, s- substances flow. Um, so, but you you are right. Eh? The, the the major challenge is to to communicate between these levels and to have a overview of of all these levels. I promised we're gonna give the number, so we have to give the number. It it was uh, around twenty to one twenty one percent. Yes, yes. Um, of course, as you mentioned, this tells some things but not a lot of things yeah. uh, meaning that if we have to contextualize it i think in uh and the word we're at a six percent or seven percent at europe mm. where it's something like a eight nine ten percent mm. um whenever we see these new circularity gap reports coming out the countries are between two and ten percent some others are, are 10 15 percent so no. we we generally are around that ballpark this is kind of a high yeah. rates compared to other ones i think this is also contextually yeah. uh because of uh, of flanders but as you say it, it it kind of covers many other aspects um if the inputs are high and we still have a circular economy 
are we going in the right track or not, mm. right? I mean, w what are we tracking and what is good and what is bad in the circular economy? Yeah. So, so that was the 21%. The and as you mentioned, of course, there are needs within the economy, right? We mm. have societal needs and we mentioned uh, about the mobility sector and circularity. Perhaps before we get into mobility as a need, it might be interesting to discuss what is the interaction of mobility with the entire region, right? What, where are the flows and stocks and stuff like that, that uh, the mobility kind of triggers or is the driver of? Um, so I guess it's fossil fuels, it's metals. What, what happens there? It's the roads. What are the flows that are connected to uh, the mobility sector? Yeah. Uh, the the roads were included in in construction and mm. not not in the mobility, um, but indeed it are the metals, uh, the composite materials and plastics. Uh, it are the fossil fuels, quite important uh, part of it. That's the main thing uh, in uh, for for the mobility inflows. But what we did uh, is we. Um, in the general materials flow analysis of flanners, we uh, decomposed it towards the different sectors or need systems or whatever you call it. Uh, and then we saw that yeah, the big four were actually, uh, yeah, uh, mobility was in there. Eh? So mm. uh, housing construction in general, uh, but also the, the, the food system uh, was in there. Uh, consumption goods, um, that's a bit of a general term <laughs> that we also decompose then in, in electronics and textiles and, and furniture and things like that. And then mobility, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's uh, yeah, one of the, the, the bigger ones uh, in, the, in the whole system. So it's important. I, have, I don't have the, the right number here, yeah. but, but um, it's not that uh, it's unimportant, uh, not in weight. And since that's maybe also something that we all, uh, also have to say, all these, these diagrams are based on weights. Uh, uh, but if we would do that based on money, eh, on financial uh, uh, aspects, yeah, then, then it mobility would become much bigger even mm. since uh, we use materials with a much higher value eh, than in construction uh, the concrete and the, and the and the low carbon street, uh, steel that we use there um, they are cheaper than the copper and, and things like that that we need uh, and some lithium and, and so forth for the mobility and I think it's the same, we're going to go a bit further on, but the same thing with the carbon footprint in terms of yeah, yeah, carbon of course, yeah, mobility yeah, yeah, is uh, one of the big, big yeah, sectors, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So perhaps we can give um, some specific uh, characteristics of the mobility sector now. Uh, like, wh How do you characterize a mobility sector? Because yeah. it's hard, it's, right? It's, it's a... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll let you. I mean, you, you have you have uh, many ways to do so, but I'll let you perhaps explain. Okay, we have a need, a societal need. Now, how do we describe what is happening today in terms of mobility with that need, and yeah, uh, how do we fulfill yeah. it? Yeah. So, what is a societal need? Eh? Well, we took actually the person kilometers as a basis for that, eh? so you can calculate that. Well, we had. I have to admit, we had to combine a lot of different sources in Belgium <clears throat> and in Flanders, since all data are a bit scattered over uh, <laughs> of all kind of administrative uh, uh, departments. Uh, but you can come to a number for the person kilometers driven. And yeah, of course, uh, uh, that's partly driven by car, by train, yeah, the planes were not included there. Uh, that's international then. Uh, by uh, bike, of course, that by bike, the person kilometers are, are, are smaller. And a big chunk in there is personal mobility, that, that I can say. Mm. So we started there and we looked at how that, that evolves. And we took that for granted since uh, I, I often, when I give uh presentations about these these uh, topics i often get the question yeah but 
we could also try to uh, work on the on um, on the demo or the, the the indicator of the person kilometers. Uh, do we have to travel that much? Of course. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm an engineer, so <laughs> we we started there and see what we can do to fulfill that, and then. We had to to find out yeah what what is needed to to come there. We need these cars, these trains, and so forth. Um, and for the cars, that that's the bit chunk I already said. We looked at how long are they used, how efficiently are they used, in terms of how many people uh, are sitting on average in a car which is very disappointingly low, <laughs> uh, 1.3, by, uh, between 1.3 and 1.4, and so forth. Eh? And the, 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 the nice thing is that yeah, you have to make time series of these, yeah. these indicators, and then you see what is going down, what is going up, what is helping circuit economy, what is not, eh? and guess what? Eh? We are good in recycling. And so uh, there we are again, but it's it, it's good. Eh? That that's fine, uh, and that's a that's a nice message as well. Eh? Uh, so more than ninety five percent of the materials are recycled or recovered in some way in the in the cars. But other uh, other indicators such as lifetime, that's uh, that's uh, quite stable. But for example, number of passengers is going down. And so our, we are using less and less efficiently our cars. So that's then against circuit economy. So then if you see all these, these, these indicators next to each other, then you see where politicians have to work on. What, what has worked in the past as well. Eh? Another indicator that we followed up is in the, in the carbon footprint as well. Um, yeah, in per, per kilometer is that also going down. And it's not, what is also a good message. So uh, policies are working as well there. Is it working fast enough? That's another question, <laughs> of course. Uh, but okay, eh? so we can give good messages but also points of attention we also try to, to see for example uh, car sharing is that taking off uh, and flanders is a good region for for car sharing does it have an impact on the amount of cars sold for example we don't see that uh, so because the amount of private cars is still much bigger than the amount of, of shared cars and the total increase is going even faster than than the um, the growth of in in car sharing. So okay, these are all aspects that we can follow up and that that learns, uh, yeah, the 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 um, administration that learns the administration uh, what what works, what doesn't work, uh, where to go, uh, what to stimulate. Uh, and, and things like that. I think it's yeah, it's important to indeed have like a array of indicators to. Yeah, and, and, you need a dashboard of indicators, uh, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Correct, because as you say, I mean, things. Some things are going up, and it's good. Other things are going down, and it's not that good. And at the same time, we have to compare them. We need to be able to to also say okay. And at the end, the combination of all of that, what does it tell us? No. And I think it's quite important. So, for instance, uh, when we see the the kilometers, as you mentioned, it's relatively stable o over the last 10 years or so. So we're at, uh, uh, what is it, 90 billion uh, kilometers that users are doing. No. Uh, it's what, 3 million inhabitants in uh, Flanders? No, no, seven, eh? seven, seven. Seven, seven, okay. Seven, yeah. So if we divide it by seven, yeah, okay. We were around 10,000 per person per year, mm. which also gives you, when we talk about a need, if it's a given or not, what, what, what yeah. 10,000 kilometers uh, really mean, yeah. right? Uh, what exactly, is it for yeah. school, for work and all of that? And mostly uh, 80%, 90% are cars. Um, and I think what's interesting, as you mentioned, is that there are some good things and some bad things together. So cars uh, per household are going up. So we, 
we're between 1.2 to 1.4 today more or less we have more and more car the use intensity is going down and the use efficiency is going down and at the end of the day we also see that trucks are going up we, we didn't we talked about cars we buses are relatively stable but also trucks are going up and so we see this this uh, mixed image of societal needs yes we need to move but also our equipments or products and all of that need to move as well and yeah, and, and that that that, uh, that could be a controversial part of circular economy as well eh? since we we need quite some logistics if we want to close loops better if we want to reuse packaging for example then then this reverse logistic uh, that that will grow eh? so <laughs> i uh, there is some con yeah uh, controversy there yeah yeah and I, th and i think it's important that we always put them w side by side right because yeah. it's it's hard to to well sure it's good to make car sharing but if we increase trucks uh, by a, a magnitude yeah, an order of yeah. magnitude is that yeah. enough and is that the yeah. real answer yeah. um another another uh, graph that i found very interesting in in your circular economy assessment of the mobility sector is the um, the pollution emissions mm -hmm. so the life cycle of vehicles and also the pollution emissions so we see how well newer cars are more efficient so it means that they emit less we also see that the age of cars are going up and we also see that the emissions are either stagnating or going a bit up in, in depending on what we we take into account i think over here what's what's quite interesting is that we tend to keep cars for longer if i understand correctly yeah and older cars were less efficient yeah and so there is still the we don't perceive the the benefits of adding efficient cars in the system yet right we still have the old cars that are, that are more inefficient that still drive the the curve up plus the new uh, plus the new cars is this the mix of the two that that make that the emissions are not decreasing because we're adding more and more efficient cars right what happens how come the, the emissions of cars are not decreasing i i I think it's 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 the total emission, if I'm correct. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, I, I think it also has to do with um, the fact that maybe the the total of numbers of kilometers driven by cars is also going up a bit. Driven by people, yeah, it's relatively yeah. stable, I have to say, and indeed, it's also relatively stable the emissions. Um, yeah. But it's also always a bit. A disconcerting to to see that it's not necessarily going down so the the the, yeah. the efficiency of course is not necessarily what is going to drive the, the the emissions down it's more what you say it's the kilometers driven right yeah that we yeah, need to exactly. focus on so i i find it quite interesting this technology efficiency part versus the the demand part which are two pieces of the puzzle that we need to keep in mind when we talk about how to reduce the emissions, right? I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, it's perhaps the number of kilometers that yeah, we yeah, need yeah. to think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another aspect, if you think about cars, is that um, we have the, the emissions, the footprint of the use of the cars, uh, but we also have the footprint of the production of the cars. And um why transitioning towards electric vehicles and that 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 emissions and it's a bit contradictory but uh, these emissions will go up a bit <laughs> uh, since we try to introduce quickly all this 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 electric cars and for that we need a lot of materials uh, and the production of these materials have a large footprint so temporarily during some years we will see a little peak of CO2 emissions uh, uh, because of the production phase of, of the cars. Uh, but that will uh, then, then afterwards, the effect of <laughs> the use phase will become bigger and bigger. And so it, it, uh, the total will, will uh, certainly go down. Mm. If we want to avoid that, uh, we have to, 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 to promote more uh, the, yeah, the lightweight cars. And uh, uh, since that could also be another uh, another aspect is eh, so we, we see the trends uh, towards heavier cars, the SUVs. Uh, um, 
that that might also have an impact on on, on this this indicator. We could also promote car sharing. And so we did some some uh, modeling on that. And mm. so we took actually the um, stock flow model, or we, we constructed the stock flow model of the car fleet, uh, specifically uh, for personal mobility in Flanders. And we imposed on that a system dynamics model uh, to see yeah, how yeah, can... can um, the market of new cars, for example, how will that inf- evolve uh, depending on uh, the introduction of electric vehicles, but also depending on car sharing and things like that. Um, how can uh, the, the, the recycling sector evolve, the outflow evolve, um, depending on lifetime of, of these cars and, and so forth. And so uh, we construct a such, such a system dynamics model and we introduce some circular economy strategies. And so what would happen if we are able to reduce the weight of cars by 10%, for example, or if car sharing is uh, increasing towards 10% of all the, of all the, 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 the cars uh, in Flanders. Um, and actually, by, by combining circular economy strategies, we, we found out that we can reduce in the coming years these demand for materials, but as well the carbon footprint eh, that, that goes with it uh, actually by 40%, eh, uh, which is an important <laughs> number, I would say. Eh? So we, don't, we, we, we shouldn't only look at improving the, the technology of the, the drivetrains uh, or uh, of shifting towards uh, electrical uh, motors, but yeah, if you all also should would look to um, yeah these circular economy strategies, then that would also help a lot. Eh? Uh, so these are what you call the the four scenarios, right? So the the business as usual, the the techno fix, the linear climate scenario, and then the circular climate scenario, right? These are the four that you have developed, and perhaps we can give some insights about what they mean. Each one of them, so business as usual is just <laughs> business as yeah. usual, nothing much. Uh, 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 and then Technofix is m- introducing a hundred percent of new EV. Yeah, just replacing internal combustion engines by electrical vehicles. Yeah. 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 Uh, then you have the linear uh, climate scenario, which is passenger road transportation is reached. Uh, so the the climate target for this is reached by twenty thirty, so minus yeah. fifty one. Uh, by uh, driving much less kilometers and by using more energy yeah. efficient. Yeah. So yeah. it's both those levers. Yeah. And then the last one is all of that plus, plus car leads. sharing and yeah. ride sharing, right? Yeah. 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 And in this, as you say, we see that the so the technical scenario, meaning the, the 100% new uh, electrical vehicles by 2030, we just have uh, a decrease of 20%, let's say, uh, from the yeah. business as yeah. usual, yeah. 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 Uh, and then the other ones are really rapidly uh, decreasing with the climate, uh, with the circular climate scenario being the most uh, predominant. But the, but the linear one is also quite close by because mm-hmm. you reduce the demand, right? So we see that yeah. Yeah. it's quite dramatic, right? It's uh, a, a reduction from the business as usual uh, of sixty uh, percent or something like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Uh, from currently, it's fifty, but. You know, yeah. it's it's non negligible at all. Yeah, indeed, and 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 I I really think we have to to go into that direction. Um, honestly, I, I said it uh, already in the beginning. I'm I'm a convinced car share uh-huh. myself, eh? and um, because of course I've I've done this this kind of studies. Uh-huh. Uh, that's that's one reason. But then on on the other hand. Um, yeah, there are a, a lot of, of concerns taken away from me. Eh? I don't have to go to the garage. It's done for me uh, or to the technical control of the, of the car. I, 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 I have the car or the size of the car that I need at the moment. Eh? If I have to move for the children something, uh, I can have a bigger car and so forth. So I like that and it's quite comfortable. And what we also saw is that some of the hurdles that people see to step into a car sharing system 
are non-existent for car shares. And, and the main one is actually the, 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 the so-called burden of reservating your, the car. Uh, so people that do not share a car think that it is really yeah very cumbersome to to always think about yeah I need a car and I have to to open the app. If you ask the same question to uh, car shares, they don't consider it at all as a burden. Something that is it's a mindset actually. Mm. Uh, if you have your own car, you also have to think about going to the garage and, and, and planning that and things like that. So you al also have planning issues, <laughs> uh, so to say. So it, it's, and I admit, I live in Leuven with a lot of car sharing points at, at 100 meter of my house. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky with that. Eh? And, and of course, uh, but I'm convinced that, that this system can be can can help a lot actually in our aim to 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 uh, decrease the, the carbon footprint, but also the material footprint of uh, the material system. And of course, I, I need I, I need a, a good app for that. You can't car share without a digital uh, help for for that. But I see that that a lot of car manufacturers are also taking uh, and and foreseeing even systems in in new cars to plug it in into car sharing uh, systems, so or even uh, developing a, a car sharing model uh, themselves. So it's another point is that that yeah, um, it's 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 uh, um, also quite social. Eh? Younger people are not always able to to buy a car eh? mm. uh, and yeah it's to step in into a car sharing system it's it's easier it's uh it's cheaper eh? you could also say that it's not good since that increases the the carbon <laughs> footprint of mobility but okay you need a car for certain certain trajectories as well of course eh? Yeah, I think it's important. I mean, you know, we mentioned at the beginning, we drastically reduce the amount of cars needed because we share them. And therefore, everything, you know, uh, uphill and downhill is also yeah. reduced, yeah. which is the most important, of course. Yeah. Um, we could talk about the valorization of tires and end of life cars yeah. and all of that. But yeah. I think there is something more important than you alluded to it, which is the digitalization Yes, and indeed. circular economy. Yeah, yeah. I think we can spend some time about, you know, there are some elements uh, before we started the recording. We also mentioned how it's a crucial point today. If we want to recycle, if we want to have secondary materials at a steady pace yeah. and at a steady quantity and quality, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. we need to, to have um, information about it, about these yeah, materials, right? E exactly. You need a lot of information along the value chain uh, um, you need a, a good communication between the, the different stakeholders in the value chain we discussed now about the government and the governmental agencies as one stakeholder for which we are doing this monitoring and we also need a lot of data for that that's one objective but the other objective is is also information exchange between uh, the different stakeholders, uh, recyclers, they have to know what what is coming to the recycling plants uh, in the coming years. Mm. Uh, what is the urban mine looking like? What is the composition of materials? Uh, the uh, yeah repairs they they, they 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 need to know how to repair things, how to dismantle uh, components, how they can replace them. Um, also in the design of cars, uh, you need a lot of information about uh, the whole value chain. Um, as a consumer, eh, I also need to know where there are cars available. Uh, uh, but I also give some information, of course, uh, about the condition of the car uh, and, and so forth. Um, so, yeah, that, that exchange is, is very complex, I have to say. Uh, um, um, there are many layers in there. We <laughs> already discussed yes. the layers of the material and the component and the value chain and so forth. Uh, so all these layers, they they need data. 
you have different um, you have different objectives of, of, of this data. You have the, the, the monitoring, you have the information exchange uh, and so forth. It's a complex, if you go from, from data, uh, from information to, to data, you also have to think of, yeah, what are relevant things that you want to know? Of course, and that, because we can measure so many things. But You what can do you measure do? a lot of things, but yeah. what is relevant, relevant to, 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 to uh, the circuit economy? Eh? What, what data do you have to collect? How can you standardize or make it exchangeable how will you store all this data exchange it uh, with the stakeholders a major issue there is intellectual property uh, uh, can you do that i think you can do uh, since think of the health system uh, everything is known about your health but i cannot know yeah. anything about your health eh? and and even doctors can only know part of it uh, based on their specialism and so forth. So that kind of system can also exist for materials, uh, I do believe. And one step uh, towards this digital backbone is what is called the digital product passport. Uh, the European Commission is very much uh, pushing that, stressing that. It will not, it's, it's now being designed for batteries. Uh, where you can follow up on the lifetime of batteries, how it's used, uh, what the materials in there are, and, and so forth, which helps uh, setting up good circular business models and circular uh, value chain, chains. Will that be enough? I don't know. I'm not sure. Eh? We need uh, these systems to be able to talk with, with each other. Eh? We need also to be sure that what is in the system is trustable. Hmm? Hmm. So the connection between a physical object and virtual data, that's not obvious. Eh? And you are not, uh, the user of this data is not at the place where the data is generated. So it has to be verifiable um, as well. So I think we need a lot of uh, developments, research and developments there. It's not only uh, filling out an Excel file. It's mm. much, much more than that. And we really, really think, uh, we really have to think at the conceptual level of that. Eh? Are we doing the right things with data since indeed um, you can measure a lot of things, but are we measuring the right things? Eh? And we have to realize, realize that Measuring data and exchanging data comes also with a footprint. <laughs> uh, so we have to optimize that as, as well. So it's, it's a, a complete field that is open. But on the other hand, uh, if we want to, um, yeah, if we want to accelerate to upscale circuit economy, we really, really need such a digital backbone that enhances uh, the the communication between all these stakeholders uh, that also de-risks uh, these value chains also for investors that's that, that's also an important aspect for it, for example so there are many aspects uh, related to that but um, yeah for me it's 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 European Commission calls it uh, the twin transition eh? the yeah. uh, uh, circuit economy and the uh, and the digital, uh, dig digital agenda, um, yeah, it's 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 even more than a twin. It's 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 really intertwined with uh, with each other for me. To to conclude, I think I I could ask you two things. Uh, I could ask you, okay, let's imagine we have this backbone uh, yeah. by tomorrow and. What do we do with it or how do we utilize it? And how does it, you as a researcher, you know, input elements and what does the decision maker on the other end yeah. kind of takes? Yeah. Because you already have, you know, the, the dashboard, which is already yeah. semi-data intensive. When we're going to talk about digital backbones, it's going to be uh, enormously more data intensive, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, so, of course, 
if you have a vision already of what will happen in the future in terms of these this twin of a circular economy and digital economy for the mobility sector or perhaps something easier would also be how do we get there what are some first steps in order to get there because i think it's hard to imagine already how the the stakeholders will use it there's probably going to be new uses we don't even know today uh, but perhaps in the meantime what are some things you can easily do as a researcher to get there or to build, you know, or to put the foundation. What can you do as a circular economy researcher to... No. There are no silver bullets. Of course, yes. <laughs> it's, yes it's, course. It's, uh, and and um, I said it uh, already, it's, it's, it's a very complex thing to do. Where to start? Well, there are several entrances, let's say, to that field. Uh, the entrance of my research group is... Uh, thinking, doing work about indicators. Um, what is relevant information different stakeholders need to know? Uh, mm. What needs a, a, a politician or a governmental agency to know to, to help and steer a bit the circular economy? What does a company need to know, uh, not only to comply with the CSRD <laughs> for our clarity, but to really uh, improve the circularity of the value chains in which they are active. Eh? And it's um, a first thing to do is to include the indicators that, that we are uh, setting up and, and developing to include these things, for example, in their design phase, since uh, it said that 80% of the impacts are already... Um, fixed uh, in the design uh -huh. phase. Uh -huh. Okay, that's that's an important step to take. Eh? Um, of course, these this, this data structures, we, today we have now these digital product passports, but uh, there can be done a lot more um, on yeah, what, what, what data structures are there behind it I, i'm not a specialist <laughs> specialist in that in that but there is a whole field of information systems uh a first step might be to bring these worlds uh mm. closer together eh, since um i i see that that yeah i i don't know a lot of about information systems those people don't know a lot about, about circ economy, so we have to bring these, these these together. So there are different entrances and and yeah, rather uh, little steps that that we can take, and we have to build further on on things that exist. Eh? For example, don't take it wrong. Eh? I, I didn't want to. Uh, say something uh, bad about the CSRD eh? since it's a very good step uh, but let's let's take that and let's um, let's uh, fill it in in an intelligent way eh? if there are uh, uh, if there are European uh, sustainability reporting standards about circular economy eh? so there is a, a chapter about that okay let's Let's take that as, as, as a starting point, point since companies will anyway have to report for that. Eh? But let's make it more than reporting only. Let's make it a tool eh, to really improve uh, the circularity. And therefore, we need to think very carefully about yeah, what and how will things be, be measured. Hmm? So, to, to name a few things. Well, uh, it seems like a ambitious, in, in any case, uh, you know, uh, next couple of years. Uh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we have a uh, work enough. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, great. So, you know, it's tradition uh, now that uh, I ask you if there is anything that you would like us to, to read, to watch or to listen these topics of mobility sector, circular economy, um, digitalization and circular economy. You talked about Thomas Rao as well before uh, before we we recorded. Is there anything that is you think relevant that people engage with to to continue? Yeah, it's for these topics. I, I find it very difficult since it's it's really emerging. Mm. Uh, 
Um, yeah, for 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 uh, specifically for uh, uh, mobility, um, yeah, there are some some roadmaps. Uh, um, uh, for example, from uh, uh, AMI in Europe, uh, uh, the Advanced Materials Initiative, that gives quite some in inspiration where to go uh, in the coming years. Eh? So uh, certainly for the companies that want to innovate and, and, and to go. And circuit economy is, is, is uh, yeah, is certainly in these, in these roadmaps included. Um, yeah, that's that's one thing I, I, I would uh, recommend for now. Well, that's fantastic. Many thanks, uh, Carlo, for this two-part uh, discussion. You're welcome. Uh, uh, thanks, everyone, as well, to watching until the end. Uh, if you haven't watched the first episode, just go watch the, the first one also so that you get the full perspective of, mo of mobility and resource use and emissions and circular economy. And uh, I'll see you very soon for our next one. Many thanks, Carol. <laughs>